everyone, welcome back to One Cent Sports Cards YouTube channel. I am back with another set guide and review, and this time it is for 2021 Tops Gold Label. What we're trying to do is find out how good this set really is. Is this a set where we're going to find some gold, or is it a set where we're going to be left out cold? Well, it's time to find out in this One Cent Sports Cards 2021 Tops Gold Label set guide and review. So thanks for tuning in to this 2021 Topps Gold Label Set Guide and Review. Like I said, what we're trying to figure out is how good Topps Gold Label really is. And we're going to do that by using the exclusive One Cent Sensational Set Ranking. Here's what that is. First, it is the most in-depth ranking system you're going to find anywhere on YouTube, anywhere on the internet. What I do is I break the set down into 10 different categories, everything from artistic value to the parallels to the auto checklist. If you can think of it, it is categorized and each category is worth one to 10 points. Then what we do is we add up all of those points in each of those categories and use the scoring system over to the left to give it a one to five star rating. The higher the star, the higher the rated set is. Then what we do is we compare the 2021 set with the Topps Gold Label set that came out back in 2020 to see if the set is getting better, to see if it's getting worse. And then we'll compare it to all of the other 2021 sets that have come out to see how well it stacks up against the competition this year. So one more thing before we begin, if you can, please throw over to first, hit that like button if you like these reviews it is the best way for you to support the channel and if you like these reviews be sure to subscribe because you can watch every one of them we do them for every major release that comes out in the card season and if you want to be the first to get the review be sure to hit that bell notification so you can be the first one to view it so here we go, Topps Gold Label 2021. Here's what we're gonna cover off on today. First, we'll do the set highlights, let you know kind of what you're getting into. Then we'll cover off on the different buying formats you can find it in, dig a little bit deeper. We're gonna tell you what the key cards are, the key rookies, the key parallels, the key autos. And I'm even gonna give you six teams that you can target in breaks. The team that I think is going to be the most valuable, the team that I think is the best overall, the team with the most autos, uh, some solid choices, and a couple sleepers. So that way you know exactly who you should be buying into for breaks. So stay tuned for that. Then I'll give my opinions on what I think the set positives of Gold Label are and what I think the negatives are. And that's what brings us to the one cent sensational set ranking where we find out how good Topps Gold Label really is. And then we'll end it with all of our rankings to date for every 2021 set that has been released so far in the baseball card collecting season. So let's first cover off on the set highlights. The main thing you need to know about 2021 Topps Gold Label is it is a simple yet elegant three-tiered set that features a ton of gold elements. It is in its 10th year of production, started way back in 1998, then came back in 2000 to 2002, and since 2016, Topps has been producing Gold Label. The set is a 100 card base set checklist, but it has three tiers. There's class one, class two, and class three tier. And each class as it moves up is rarer than the class below it. So let's break that down a little bit. Take the Mookie Betts card over on the right. Mookie Betts is going to have three different cards in the set. A class one card, a class two card, and a class three card. Typically what you'll find is the class one card features him Fielding, the class two card will feature him running and the class three card will feature him batting And each class as it moves up is rarer than the class below it. The set does feature rookies. It features veterans and it has a few retired MLB stars and Hall of Famers. It's only available as a hobby format. So no retail for gold label and each hobby box guarantees one framed on card auto. So all of the autos will be on card 
And for our parallel rainbow, we get a five color parallel rainbow. There's one new color for this year. It is purple. And the set does not have any inserts. It is a very, very simple, straightforward set. New for 2021, we're going to find the Auric Framed Autograph subset. Very nice cards if you can get them. They're each going to be numbered to like 25 or less. A nice little addition to the autograph lineup for Topps Gold Label in 2021. And returning in 2021, we have the Gold Prospect Relics. Those all feature actual gold nuggets within the relics. So some pretty cool cards you can pull there. And returning as well, we have the Golden Greats Framed Autograph Jumbo Relics. Those feature retired stars and Hall of Famers. So what are the different buying formats that we can get Topps Gold Label in? Well, first you can get a hobby case. There's gonna be 16 boxes per case, seven packs per box, five cards per pack. That'll get you 560 total cards and run you around 2000 bucks at the current price. So your cost per card on that breaks down to $3.57. You're guaranteed to get 16 autos, 64 parallels, 112 class two cards and 80 class three cards. We can also just get a hobby box. There's going to be seven packs in a box, five cards per pack. So 35 total cards cost you about $127 with a cost per card of $3.63. You're going to get one auto, four parallels, seven class two and five class three cards on average per box. Those are the only buying formats that we can get Topps Gold Label in. So what are the different parallels? Well, they break down by class. So let's do class one first you have your base card and then there's the black parallel which lands one in two packs the blue parallel which is numbered to 150 the purple which is new for 2021 going to be numbered to 99 then we have a red to 75 and a gold one of one for class two the same color breakdown but a little bit more rare on the pull so for your black, you're one in six packs. Your blue is only going to be numbered to 99. Your purple numbered to 75. Your red to 50 and your gold one of one. And finally, for class three, same thing. The base, you're going to land one in two packs. The black is going to be one in 20 packs. The blue is going to be numbered to 50, purple to 35, red to 25, and a gold one of one. So a very small parallel rainbow, but kind of neat how they work within the classes. So what are the key cards that we're going to be chasing in 2021 Topps Gold Label? Well, let's cover off on the rookies first. Plenty of rookies that are featured throughout the set. Tons of them in the 100 card base set checklist. The key ones are going to be Andrew Vaughn, Jazz Chisholm, Joe Adele, Jake Cronenworth, Cabrian Hayes, Ryan Mountcastle, Casey Mize, Jonathan India makes an appearance, Jared Kelnick is also in the set. Alex Kirilov is there. Nick Madrigal, Dylan Carlson, and of course, Joey Bart. For our parallels, autos, and relics, the key cards we're going to be chasing will be the class one, two, and three parallel cards. All of the numbered ones, obviously, going to be pretty sought after. Our gold prospect relics, those are the ones with the golden nuggets within the card. Very cool cards if you can pull those. The MLB Legends Relics. We also have the new Auric Framed Autographs. Like I said, those are going to be numbered to 25 or less. You can see what those look like over on the right. A very solid auto checklist in that subset. We also have Framed Dual Autos. Very hard to pull, but if you can get one, a very, very nice pull to get. We also have the Golden Greats Framed Autograph Jumbo Relics. Those are the ones with the retired stars, the Hall of Famers. Very nice big jumbo patches plus autos on those. And we have, of course, the framed autos, which Gold Label is very well known for with the gold frame around the autographed card. For our relics and auto relics that we're looking for in 2021 Topps Gold Label, not a ton, but there are a few. So let's cover off on them. First, we have the gold prospect relics. You can see what that looks like over on the right with the little gold nugget in there. 20 cards in the subset, each number to 25 or less. And there is a parallel rainbow of black and a gold one of one. We also have the golden greats 
framed autographed relics. Again, those are of the retired stars and Hall of Famers, each going to be numbered to 50 or less, 20 cards in that subset with the same black and gold parallel rainbow. Finally, we have the MLB Legends relics, 43 cards in that subset, each numbered to 50 or less. These are not autoed, but they are relics. There is a parallel breakdown of black and gold as well. We also have the autograph lineup. There's the Arc framed autographs. We saw the Bryce Harper, what that looked like a few moments ago. 18 cards in that subset, each numbered to 25 or less. And then the framed autographs. This is what you're going to find in most boxes that you open. There's 85 cards in that set with a parallel breakdown of black to 75, blue to 50, red to 25, and a gold one of one. You can see what that looks like over on the right with the Mike Trout. That's going to be the red parallel. A beautiful, beautiful auto. They are all on card autos as well. You can also get a framed dual autographed, 13 cards in that subset, each number to 10 or less, and there is a parallel breakdown as well, black to five and gold one of one. So, like I said, a very straightforward set. Not a lot of inserts, not a lot of frill, not a lot of nonsense, just autos and a few parallels. So, the question becomes, who should we be targeting in team breaks? What are the key teams that we should really be looking for for the best return on our investment well like i said i'm going to go ahead and give you six different teams so let's start out with what i think the best team is and i think that's going to be the chicago white Sox. here's the breakdown of what you can get from the chicago white Sox from gold label this year there's going to be six base cards three of those are rookie cards there are nine different autos that they have in the set and three relics now, the auto is kind of the key ones that you're going to be looking for. Going to be an Andrew Vaughn auto, a Luis Robert auto, a Nick Madrigal auto. You got Frank Thomas in there. So a very, very good auto lineup. And they have plenty of cards. Six out of 100 are going to be Chicago White Sox. Plenty of rookie cards in the set. So overall, I think the Chicago White Sox are the best team that you can get, whether it be a pick your team or a random team break. The Chicago White Sox probably going to command a pretty high dollar on this set. But the return on that, especially with Andrew Vaughn, Luis Robert, Frank Thomas, Nick Madrigal, a few other nice stars that you can get from the White Sox auto lineup. I just think that they are going to be consistently one of the best teams break in and break out for Topps Gold Label. If you're looking for the most autos, you got to go look at the New York Yankees. They've got six base cards, no rookie cards, but there are some rookies in the auto checklist that aren't available in the base set checklist, and they have more autos than anyone else. They've got 12 different autos and four relics, kind of the top autos that I would pull out of the Yankees auto lineup going to be Aaron Judge, Derek Jeter, Don Mattingly. They kind of lead the way on the New York Yankees auto checklist. But if you're looking for a solid choice, maybe even a little bit of a sleeper here, you've got the Baltimore Orioles. They've only got two base cards, so not a ton of base cards. One of them is a rookie card, obviously going to be Ryan Mountcastle. They have a surprising amount of autos, though, with eight, and they also have five relics. And the auto lineup, pretty solid. Going to be led by Ryan Mountcastle, Brooks Robinson, Cal Ripken Jr. So a lot of nice retired stars that you can pull out of there. You got Ryan Mountcastle in there. A very solid choice. Probably going to be in the top 10 value-wise. And I do think that the Baltimore Orioles, if you're chasing autos in a case break, something like that, going to be a pretty decent team if you can get them at the right price. The team that I think that is going to hold the most value, however, going to be the Seattle Mariners. A little bit of a surprise here. I also wanted to go with the Angels here because the Angels have Mike Trout and Joe Adele autos, multiple different Mike Trout autos you can get. But I'm going to go with the Mariners for long-term value here. And here's why. They've got six base cards, two different rookie cards you can get, eight different autos, and three relics. But that auto lineup is stacked with great, great autos. You've got the Jared Kelnick auto in there. 
Ichiro has autos. Edgar Martinez has autos. Ken Griffey Jr. has an auto in there. So when you look at the auto checklist, the Mariners have some really, really big names, some Hall of Famers in there. Jared Kelnick, obviously, if he pans out, that auto could be worth a ton down the road. So I'm going to go with the Mariners in this break. I think they'll be pretty expensive if you do a pick your team. But if you're into those autos and if you're into those names probably worth paying the cost of entry to get the seattle mariners if you get them in a random team break keep them they've got a ton of base cards they've got a nice number of autos in there you can even get a few relics so i think if you get them in a random team break you're doing real good congratulations on that keep them if you can make a trade uh that would be fantastic now if you're looking for a couple sleepers First sleeper I'm going to give you, the Cincinnati Reds. They've got three base cards, two rookie cards, six different autos, and three relics. But I really like their auto lineup. Again, we've got Jonathan India, who has played fantastic. He's one of the front runners for National League Rookie of the Year. You've got Tyler Stevenson, another solid catcher, rookie for the Cincinnati Reds. Johnny Bench is in there. Barry Larkin's in there. So some very nice autos that you can get from the Cincinnati Reds. I believe they'll be kind of middle of the road when it comes to value and a pick your team break on how much it's going to cost you to get that team. If you can get them at the right price, the Cincinnati Reds, you might have the rookie of the year in there. You've got Tyler Stevenson. If you don't get one of those autos, a decent chance at getting a nice Hall of Famer. And the Cincinnati Reds have a great following. They Definitely have plenty of value on the secondary market, so don't sleep on the Cincinnati Reds. My second sleeper, going to be the Philadelphia Phillies. They've got three base cards, one rookie card, and a surprising number of autos. They've got nine different autos, so if you're chasing autos, the Phillies going to be a very good team. Good chances that you get one in a case break or something like that. You've got two different relics you can also get. Alec Bohm. Bryce Harper, Mike Schmidt, those are going to be the autos that kind of lead the auto way for the Philadelphia Phillies. But there's also a couple rookies that aren't in the base set checklist that you can get from the Philadelphia Phillies as well. So don't sleep on the Phillies. So those are my teams that I am going to recommend for breaks. A lot of good teams that you can get in gold label. So be sure to check out those checklists before you buy into a pick your team or into a random team. The auto checklist is so very important in this set. So what are the positives now that we know everything we need to know about gold label? I believe that the straightforward uh, mindset of this set, there's no frills, there's no fluff, very quality names throughout the set. It's a very tight 100 card Base set checklist, you've got Hall of Famers, tons of rookies, some very nice veteran cards in there. So it's just quality names, not a lot of fluff. Love that about Gold Label. Also, if you're a set collector, it's actually a challenging set, which is a good thing. To collect all three classes of the base set, collecting class one going to be fairly easy. Class two, probably not too difficult. But when you get up to that class three level, it becomes a very, very challenging set to complete for set collectors. So set collectors may want to look at gold label as a very cool kind of nice, elegant set to collect for 2021. I also like that all the autos are going to be on card autos. It's a quality set. So we get on card autos on these and the auto checklist pretty solid. I also like that even though it looks like Topps Gold Label, Gold Label's been around, like I said, it's it's in its 10th year of production. It's similar to the past designs, but they did a significant design update for 2021. 2019 and 2020 looked very similar to each other. They have updated the look of it to look much more updated, which I like that. So congrats on kind of pushing the envelope of what a Topps Gold Label card can look like Topps. And... I also like that there's not a lot of filler in the framed auto checklist. There are plenty of rookies. Obviously, some of those names are going to be better than others, and not all of the rookies are going to pan out. So a little bit of filler maybe on the rookie checklist, but you also have a ton of veteran and retired stars. So you can get a lot of Hall of Fame autos out of this. You can get Mike Trout. You can get Juan Soto, Ronald Acuna Jr. All the, all those names are going to be in here. So a solid, solid checklist on the framed auto checklist. So it's not one of those kind of like Topps Chrome where you're going, man, there is a ton of filler in this stuff. 
And I also like that there's some very cool relics that can be found in gold label. Like the gold nugget thing would just be an awesome pull, an awesome card to have in the collection. And again, those checklists also have a ton of good names in them as well. But there's also some negatives to the set. And the first one going to be the cost per auto is fairly high. If you can get a box of this for around 125 bucks, your cost per auto is a, uh, is 125 bucks. Your cost per card's pretty high too. It's sitting kind of right at around three dollars fifty cents, something like that. And not every one of these cards obviously going to be worth three dollars and fifty cents. So just know that going in, it's a little bit more of a quality set, but. It's kind of weird because I would say the price point is kind of odd. It's not like a premium price point at $125, but it's not value priced either. So the set kind of sits out there in the ether and it's really hard to kind of pinpoint who it's targeting, which is my next negative. Are we targeting hit chasers because we know there's one in a box? Are we targeting set collectors? Are we targeting uh, premium card collectors are we targeting like entry level premium it's kind of unclear so it's weird to me that gold label doesn't really have a spot that fits really well i believe that there is a following for gold label but because of that it kind of gets lost in the ether a little bit when we talk about the secondary market and what happens there is the secondary market becomes a little soft for gold label so although some of the cards do command a decent value if you pull uh one of the parallels especially or the gold one of ones obviously very long pulls but some of the blacks and even some of the base yes they hold value however they're not holding the same value that an equal card of say tops chrome or another set kind of along those lines would hold so a little soft but I do think that having these as a collector's piece versus an investing piece, I think it targets collectors a little bit more than investors. So keep that in mind. They are beautiful on-card autos, all gold framed. They really are kind of collector's pieces, but the market for them is just a tad soft on the secondary market. And finally, as you open up a box of these, it is a fairly predictable pack opening there's no inserts so you know you're going to get your four parallels you know you're getting seven packs you know you're getting one auto you know what pack the auto is in before right as you open the box because it weighs about three times as much as the other packs and you can feel it but so you know it going in it's a very predictable pack opening which kind of makes for not a very exciting break to watch but it also as you're in like a local card shop or something like that you don't want to buy single packs of this stuff you want to buy it by the box don't buy single packs buy it by the box so with all that being said how good is tops gold label 2021 well it's time to find out let's get to the one cent sensational set ranking like i said we're going to score it on a one to five star rating breaking it down into 10 different categories so our first category going to be appeal i went ahead and gave it a six i believe that some people definitely steer clear of this set collectors i think are the main focus here but we maybe have some hit chasers in here and some set collectors in here as well but i think the gold label kind of gets lost in the shuffle i believe that because of the price point there's some appeal for some very nice autos out of here so i'm going to go ahead and give it a six for the base set checklist pretty solid this year we've got a ton of different rookies some nice retired stars obviously some good veterans i go ahead and give it a seven for our inserts and relics, well, there are no inserts, but when we take a look at the relics, some cool relics here. We've got gold nugget relic. We've also got a couple nice retired star relics, but because there's no inserts, kind of hard to give it more than a five. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a five. For our parallels and variations, again, no variations here, but there is some parallels and the parallel is a smaller rainbow, but some nice ones. I don't like that they're not all numbered. I believe they could have just numbered all of them, but that's how they get away with giving you a lot of black ones, which are nice, but they're not numbered. I go ahead and give it a five. The auto checklist, pretty strong on all fronts. Like I said, not a lot of frill, not a lot of fluff. Would have maybe liked to have seen a few more retired star names, but I get why that doesn't happen. But I'm going to go ahead and give it an eight. For our pack odds and productions, I'm actually going to go with a six on this. They do make gold label. It's only available in hobby, but they do produce a lot of it. They did 
produce a little bit more this year, which is the giveaway on the expanded parallel color rainbow with the purple being added in, but they only added in purple and those, even if the class one are only numbered to, what was it? I think 125 or something like that. So overall, I think you've got a pretty decent chance at getting a nice pull. Not every box is going to be great, but I do think like on a case by case basis, what you're going to find is each case kind of does have some nice, really nice cards that you can pull out of it. So for pack odds and productions, I give it a six card quality. These are, it's kind of interesting. These are really nice cards. When we talk about the autos, it used to be back in the day when gold label first came out a long time ago, back in the uh, 98 and early two thousands, that these were actually more of a plastic type of card. And now they've gone to paper and with the quality control, I believe that we might see some of those issues pop up in 2021. But overall, when we talk about the gold frame autos and everything, just very, very nice quality. So I go ahead and give it a seven. Historical value, middle of the road set here. Uh, not the strongest set on the secondary market, but also not the cheapest. And some of these cards do command top dollar. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a five. The artistic value. I like that they've got the gold nugget. I like that they pushed the auto checklist and expanded it a little bit with the Auric framed autographs. Those are very, very beautiful cards. They updated the design pretty significantly this year in terms of what gold label has been in the past. So I'm going to go ahead and give that a seven. And for cost value, it's $125 buy-in. These may come down a little bit. I believe the cost per auto is still pretty high. And based upon what these resell for on the secondary market, would have liked to have gone higher than four, but a little soft on that secondary market. And when you pay 125 bucks, not every auto is going to be awesome. And I don't know that the return on investment for each one of these boxes is going to be nice. Some of them are going to return much more, but I think more often than not, what you're going to find is some of these autos may only be worth five, six, seven, ten dollars $10, something like that. Some may be worth 500. However, when you're buying in at $125, you need to make that up with the parallels. And there's just not enough parallels in the box at four that you think that each box might return, say, 60, 70 percent of its value. I just don't see it happening. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a four. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to add up all of these categories and find out what score 2021 Topps Gold Label got. Our final rating on the sensational set rating for Topps Gold Label, gonna be a 60. So a high three-star set. It is not for everyone. If you're a set collector, this would be a fun set to collect. If you like on-card autos, and if you're a collector and you're chasing kind of, you know, that rookie card that you've been chasing all year, this is definitely one where you may wanna say, let me find it on the secondary market. Uh, if you like buying into breaks, you're probably going to get a few good hits here. So I think that buying into breaks on this stuff, probably not a bad idea, but overall a quality set, not quite a four star set though. And when we compare it to the 2020 set, 2020 had a 65.5. So it's regressed significantly from last year, but a lot of that has to do with the cost value. The cost is a little bit more this year. In card quality, I had it higher last year. So it's not really in the auto checklist that it got knocked. It's in some of these other areas of cost value and card quality that has kind of regressed back a little bit from last year. I also think the base set checklist was a little bit better last year as well. So we knocked it a little bit more this year than we did last year. But overall, a set that's not for everyone, but I don't think you're gonna get left out in the cold if you're buying into breaks. I would recommend definitely checking out the secondary market if you're chasing individual players. And if you're a set collector or someone that just collects and wants kind of some very nice pieces for your collection, this is a set you should definitely be looking at. So how does Topps Gold Label rate with all of the other sets to date? Well, we're gonna use the same scoring system and Topps Gold Label will rank 20 out of 30 sets that have been released so far in the 2021 card season. Tops Chrome still at the top. Bowman Baseball and Bowman Chrome rounding out the top three. Tops Tribute down there at number 10. And as we can see, Panini still has a lot of sets to come out 
They've had a, a ton of delays on a lot of their baseball products, which I think has really hurt their 2021 lineup. But Tops dominating the top 10 here. Bowman, of course, is always going to be at or near the top. Panini Select is the only set that we have from Panini that is in the top 10 right now. So Tops Gold Label, that's the review. Let me know what you think about the set in the comments below. Again, be sure to throw over to first, hit that like button for me. So that way you can support the channel and support these reviews. And as you are ripping your packs of Tops Gold Label, I wish you guys the best of luck. And until the next review, Take care of your family, take care of your friends, take care of your neighbors, and most importantly, take care of yourself. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.